Northeastern, and I hope you're all keeping safe and well. Uh, last weekend, I went to the Model Railway Exhibition, uh, bent in, bumped into a few YouTubers, and uh, and some new faces. Um, Gary uh, from Cheeky Tech, Susanna, Fred of Wilbury Castle, and it was good to bump into Mark and Gordon, some new faces, so yeah, it was great to meet everybody. And um, I come away with this, Buggles Kelly Baking, 10 ton van. Um, if you've heard of the old movie, the old black and white movie, um, Will Hayes, Oh Mr. Porter, um, this is based on that movie. Um, if you haven't seen it, it is available on YouTube to watch and um, this has really caught my eye because I do really like weird stuff like this um, yeah if you're interested in one of these if you go to www.buggleskellystation.com they do have these these are made by Daypol and um, they're, they're a splendid detail um, as you can see, and uh, before I put this on the layer, I like to do a little few checks. Basically, make sure that the the wheels are spinning. When you do a little flick like that, that just seems to spin forever. You know that you've got a good one. Then, look, still spinning now, and that one is the same. Look, still going. So, what I'll do with these, I'll normally uh, oil the axle pivot points between the wheels and the actual boxes. I'm going to put a, drop, a little drop of oil in there and uh, I will just very very slightly weather this up before I put it on the layout. On the layout I will just give it a slight weathering up because it just looks too clean. It looks like it's just come out of a box. Well it has. But all I want to do is just very very lightly use a little bit of black weathering powder just to tone it down a bit just to take the sheen off the paint and then that will be ready to go on the layout yeah that's a lot better a little bit of age that's all it needs Finally, we're going to move on to this week's video. It's all about scratch building, my favourite topic for model railways. Um, early on in the building of this layout, I, I just bought, what many of us do, uh, bought off the shelf and just plonked them on, on the layout, with the exception of a few kits, um, just to speed things up, because I knew what was coming down the line as it were especially with this uh, station because um, you've got to learn somewhere and the best way to learn is building kits uh, kit bashing them um, to make them um, for your requirements and how you want them to look on your layout so yeah so this is about my top 10 I'm going to base it on um, the detail I've put into it and the way that I've finished it um, and um, oh and I will be excluding this station because I've got to give all the little buildings a chance for one of them to get to number one <laughs> because this um, is what I see that the number one build on this layout but um, you might think different but it'd be interesting to see what your thoughts are in the comments anyway so here's my top 10. We're going to start this uh, top 10 in reverse order. And the station garage is number 10. I do like this building. Uh, I remember when I was working uh, around this area I wanted something small 
and something unique um, for this area and this is it the carriage um, it is partial kit I can't claim it as a full um, scratch build because this section here came with a magazine and this is the extension that I put onto the building and um, so yeah and I do like the way that it's turned out um, and I know um, that there's a couple of you have copied this idea and uh, that's why it's in the top 10 and uh, the station garage name is actually from a local garage um, he gave me a business card so I just cut that out and stuck that on the front and it kind of fits and uh, there we have it so this is number 10 and this has to be number 9 the vicarage reason being is this is the first building that I had ever scratch built and um, all I did was use all the old bits and pieces that you get from the Metcalf kits, the bay windows, doors and uh, all the other little bits and pieces and, um, and it does fit in that little space uh, neatly um, I did make a few mistakes uh, when I was building this but um, we do learn from it and uh, yeah it was made to measure I think at the time I said it was uh, designed for one person but the vicar has got married since and there's his wife there hanging out the washing <laughs> interesting how things develop but yeah this is number nine and for number eight it's the 1920s bush shelter um, I did have fun making those and um, it's prototypical it is an actual bus shelter or oh, well my take on it um, they were fiddly to make uh, but they have turned out quite well um, and it fits in it fits in with uh, the northeastern layout and um, they wouldn't be out of place on anybody's layout so yeah not only that it makes the scene I do like the way that that looks so there you go number 8 is the 1920s bush shelter and number 7 has to be the water tower and there it is um, yeah, I had a lot of fun making that and some new techniques were involved um, for the rings I used some copper wire and um, formed on a drill bit cut up and then pressed and then super glued to the card and uh, yeah, it was an interesting build and that's based on uh, South Shields water tower and uh, there was a photograph where I had got uh, some of the um, features from um, there is a chimney on the back of it which is very 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 hard to see in the photographs but I was assured by John Cudahy that there was definitely a chimney breast on the back of this water tower and there it is um, I did add some extra detail inside um, there was a water pump and some pipe work and some gauges and they just make that out through the doors and the only thing I am disappointed with is the windows um, they should have been made with bigger panes of glass but um, yeah there it is number seven the water tower and moving along the platform we arrive at number six which is the South Shields signal box um, 
Yet again, it was taken from photographs, and there wasn't that many photographs of it. I think I only found about three, and there weren't um, all that uh, detailed. And I had to rely on John Cudahy, the signalman of this box, to inform me uh, about the details that were missing. Um, it's still not 100% correct. Um, because the stairs leading up to the box itself ran away from the signal box but apart from that I'm quite happy with the way that that looks and um, yeah and uh, it was an interesting and fun project and uh, the roof is still loose so we can still have a little pop inside and uh, there he is pulling on the levers so I had a lot of help with that build and um, hence why it's number six and as we move on to number five there's something missing off of the platform you guessed what it is yet? Yep, it's the ticket booth. Um, yep, that has to be in the top five. The reason why I've put it in the top five is because it was the first all plastic um, building that I've made. Um, it is a dinky little building um, based on photographs of the ticket booth that was at South Shields. Um, the sizes and that we, we didn't we couldn't really get any um, dimensions at all so I just took a door and a pair of windows put a pair of windows on the side which gave us our depth and um, that's how we've ended up with this building um, as it is um, the only non-plastic bit is the little bit of sandpaper on the top which gives it its um, asphalt texture so there you go. So that has to have a worthy mention and it's number five. We're really flying along as we reach number four um, with this countdown and it has to be the Jarrah Road signal box. Now can't really get in as close as I would like to because since the signal box has been put in there's a lot of extras been built up around the signal box with the, with the trees and the signals here so it's really really hard to get a good look inside I mean, I'll try and zoom the camera in see if we can see Pete the signalman and probably spot the dog but uh, not from this angle um, what I like about this signal box is it's a, it's a total plastic build um, it was the first time I used these stone sheets um, to make a building and try to get these edges nice and square and to make them look like they blend in with each other was a little bit on the tricky side but yeah um, this has to be number four and uh, we might be able to get a closer look here if we can Snuggle the camera in between the trees, and yeah, oh, you can just make out the dog just about. You can see him there, resting on the chair just in there. So yeah, it was worth, well worth putting the detail in, because um, because you can just about see it all even from here. So yeah, Jarrow Road signal box number four. It seems like a million miles away from the Jarrow Road signal box, but this little sweet shot was taken from uh, a couple of photographs, which had been a cafe, it had been a general store, and um, and what I like about this building is just its its design, its its features, and and that is why I chose 
this building to be part of the layout because it features in photographs um, especially in the early 40s uh, in front of the South Shield station and um, and that's why it's it's here at Mrs T's sweet shop and it has to be number three um, the other thing I like about the sweet shop is the amount of details that I put into this little building the bubblegum machine on the front there, the sweets, the counter, the coca-cola machine on the inside and if we go round to the back, back of the sweet shop we can see the little outhouse there uh, the coal bunker, the cat on top of the coal bunker and as we look round into the um, kitchen area we can see uh, a machine that presses the candy we can see a sink, we can see an oven and um, lots of other little details like that that's why this building is number three and here we are we're at Snookdown Farm for number two and there's only one building here that is highly worthy of number two and that is the Snookdown Farm Cottage and uh, no matter what angle you look at this building there's a detail there that sticks out um, for instance this door um, why is it there why have we not got steps going up to it but that's what the building is like because this building is based on the building that's in the TV series Vera um, obviously the, the, the building in Vera is slightly longer but this was made like with many of my buildings to fit the space and um, it's just a great looking building um, another thing I like about this building this was the first building I put a flickering fireplace in you can see it in there not only that it's got a TV in there as well uh, three piece suite and some cupboards and a, a little lad there as well at the inside of the, the lounge area and um, as I, I look around there's other things you can see there's the garage with the tractor that's in there um, if you look on the chimney pot there's a TV aerial so it's, it's the little things like that that really stands out with this building and, um, and I do like looking at it not only that, another good thing about this building it's right next door to a railway line and when you look at it from this angle it does, you know, it just you just can't help looking at it and that's why the Snoop Down Farm Cottage is number two. Let's have a quick recap of the countdown. Um, so number ten is the station garage. Number nine is the vicarage. Number eight is the retro bush shelter. And number seven is the water tower. And number six is the South Shield signal box. And number five is the ticket booth. And uh, as you can see, I've put it back where it belongs. Back on platform one. And flying high was, of course, the Jarrah Road signal box at number four. And number three was the sweet shop. Mrs. T's Sweet Shop. Must remember to pop in there for some rhubarb and custards. And at number two was the Snoop Down Farm Cottage. So, what is number one? Let's go and find out. And here we are. Number one. And it has to be the Saracen's Head. It's just packed with detail and I enjoyed building this pub 
and um, it's not from the northeast it's from the city of Bath it's just a unique little building that I've created here and um, yeah I do like the way that it's turned out down from the weathering and all the detail that I've put inside from the artist painting his subject you can just about make her out on the bed there uh, the ghost next door um, just about the same if I turn the camera around a little bit more no, wrong window, other window, there he is Whoop. there he is and then we got the bar staff Dolly and Polly and um, even the glasses on the tables so yeah and then we got the piano man in this bar I just can't get the camera low, and low enough to see him there he is so yeah, he's just finished playing a tune and he's taken his applause yeah so the number one choice has to be the Saracen's head um, it's just yeah it's just an amazing build we have come a long way since the vicarage um, in in the way that I have learned to build buildings and um, yeah so there you have it this is the number one um, let me know you, you might think different you might think some of the other buildings are different let me know what your top three is in the comments and, and of course we have to do the honorary mentions um, obviously South Seals station does take center stage and it would have been unfair to have this in the uh, competition of my um, top 10 um, scratch builds because it, it, it wins hands down um, no doubt about that but um, if I have another t nine buildings <laughs> of this standard then it would be in a competition of its own so yeah an honorary mentioned indeed and we mustn't forget the Weybridge um, another unique building um, it should have been in the top 10 and uh, maybe next time it will be who knows in a couple of years time there may be 10 more builds we'd be looking at and I know a lot of you will be thinking, oh, he hasn't mentioned Jarrah Road. Well, I have now. Another great build, but in, in the category of what I set myself for my top 10, this is not a uh, small build. It's, it measures um, nearly four foot in length, and uh, it wouldn't have been fair to add this into the top 10 but yeah it does get an honorary mention and some of you would have thought oh, he hasn't mentioned St Hilda's Colliery well it's it does get a, an honorary mention but it's not a complete scratch build although it was kit bashed um, a partial of it partially because um, one section was bought and what I done was cut in the windows added chimney pots um, added a veranda here uh, added an office block so I, I wouldn't have called that a scratch build as such uh, I think I would have labelled that as a, a kit bash because I didn't totally make that myself. It, it was bought and then I bashed it about a bit and, and it ended up being St Hilda's Colliery. And yet again, that does get an honorary mention. And I wasn't going to forget about the mill because um, that has some very fond memories of me. Uh, walking the dog around clearly clean hills so that does get an honorary mention
Yes, so it's been an interesting look back, um, looking at all the various builds that I've done in the past, and um, and I hope it's been an interest. And uh, and uh, let me know in the comments what you think about what your top three would be. Anyway, as for the future, I'm still pondering where to go and what to do on the layout um, because there's so many jobs that need doing and. Um, Maybe I might do another small section on the layout. But until then, stay safe everybody and thanks again for watching. Bye for now. Bye.